Yeah. You know, I used to uh, it. Mm. My mother. Ah. And so, I said, I said, thank you, Kona. That's on course. I said, 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 I and the end of 105. Oh, well, eh? Just want to tell you, you got to dig it into. Because you see all the John, and then someday you can keep Ricky on the weapon. What's that? And here, and here, and here, and and here, and here, and that's the what's the answer? Kaka, see. And I was on Kobeko Altak, who couldn't see Kunaku, he's that easy. And he's going to the Chazada, or say the Tazoko Chagi, Rinarazi, and he said Rinarazi, and a highly literate and as a quota as a curry. And this she caught it and え、たんたんまる、ちょっと丸ごはん。ちょっとさ、え、そこか、こっちが、こっちが、こっちが、こっちが、こっちが、こっちが、こっちが、こっちが、こっちが、こっちが、こっちが、こっちが、こっちが、
Aware of the changes that threaten their nation, the Guchin gathered in Arctic Village, Alaska in June 1988. Such meetings were common in the past and helped in times of trouble. <laughs> That's the reason why this gathering is for this, to know one another, to be one another, because we are all Kuchin people. The Kuchin, you're talking about the Kuchin, you're talking about Vinitai, Arctic Village, Old Crow Flats, Old Crow Grassroots. Fort McPherson, you're talking about the same culture, the same native people, the same Athabascan tribe. You could, they got all kinds of different names, but we're fighting for this whole thing at once. Cat, you're just like one family. One community can't do it by themselves. We have to help each other. And uh, a gathering like this, uh, putting it together, we have to do it ourselves. It's our meeting, and we got to do it, uh, you know, we got to do it together. The Guchen had good reason to unite. Their future was at stake. Akuzakia <laughs> The gathering provided an opportunity for old friends and relatives to meet. Ah! Hannah Salmon from Fairbanks was reunited with her sister-in-law, Sarah Abel of Old Crow. I'm <laughs> 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 
The Gwich'in are one people, but they are separated by the Yukon-Alaska border. Trimble Gilbert playfully explained how his people came to live so far apart. <laughs> but the boundary is a serious problem, for it has divided the Gujin people. <laughs> I ran for house, nanning, I quat. She could have good end, went her good end, Kate a good end, could have good end, ha, sack the nets a good end. Sack what sight in Chica, cut it in. She are not that she tented a candle, just knitting a dented on Chitkaitani shoe. I heard the granddaughter. Sintra, <laughs> <laughs> I can. Yeah, just the border again. Now, start to not see her. Want to go see Sarah? We go see Sarah. Border, no border. I don't see why there should be a boundary between them. It's one people. It should be one land. The Gwich'in Nin's air was also a time for people to find their roots. She <laughs>
the Gwich'in know they face tough times. The purpose of the gathering was to discuss the nation's problems and to find ways to keep their culture alive. For many Kuchin, alcohol flows through their way of life and it is time to stop. No alcohol is allowed in Arctic Village. That is not true of other Guchin communities. Alcohol remains a serious problem, especially for the young people. <laughs> There were times at the Nintia when the Guchin were overcome with emotion in their struggle with alcohol abuse. Then the people would stand strong together and pledge to fight the alcohol battle until they won. Before you, you see people that have made a commitment against alcohol. If you have that commitment, join me. If you made a commitment to fight against alcohol, join this crowd. As alcoholic, I live one day at a time. I can't live longer than that. I can't make a commitment. Strong spiritual beliefs helped some good in people break away from alcohol.
For the Gooch Inn, there is an ancient solution to the problem of alcohol. The Gwich'in in Tsia was not always serious. The people danced, sang, and celebrated into the early hours of every morning. They had a really good time, and it was without alcohol. village were concerned about the possible death of their language. Most of the speeches were in Gwich'in. And <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Ce che è con chi? Ho voluto che non si sia visto qua, che si sia visto qua, che si sia visto qua. Non lo so, That's the only way people are going to get their language back, is living off the land and teaching their kids there. That's where it's going to start. Because I know it's not going to start in school or in town. Old people say, if you want to learn your language, you got to live off the land and do the things that's necessary to learn your language. And I believe that. Eh? The porcupine caribou herd is the lifeblood of the Gooch Inn. They are worried about the future of this honored and valuable resource. It's a, it's a human issue. It's not a caribou issue. It's our land issue, too. The Gooch Inn people are one of the last surviving people who survive from the land. We have lots to offer. And I'm just so proud to be Guchin. Chutocha. Achieve a Zahin chicken no heat and cheeha. Kinchin and churn as you caught a cheat, no hunt at in ten of them. That's a Zahin chick. Put a dog by night, cut in net of the cohesa, no son a kinchit, you won't that a kinchik one of Sichi Ukat and cheeha cohesa. Sanchea <laughs> And the second color came, he said, What I want, sir. But inside the Amoka Center, the tongue couldn't see a key. The tongue a key, the 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 ちょっとあんちゃったのがね。さっきは、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ち
everybody sit down, we eat together, we, we celebrate. How strong our elders get up then and they say, Masi to, and that hunter, that hunter feel good in here and that man is strong. When my father raised me up, he taught me about you know, how to take care of animals and I understand what he meant after 47 years. So this is something that I will have to carry out with my boy so that he'll do the same thing, not to misuse the animal or the lamb. <laughs> ที่ตัดสัมผัสจะอาการหนักที่เน้นตาชาติจะอาศัยตาชาติจะอาการหนักที่ขันกุฏตะกว่าสุขกุฏตายเต็มชีวิตอาคติจบกว่าย้อนว
development now threatens to destroy the porcupine caribou herd. The American government is considering opening up the calving grounds for oil exploration. I just the oil experience here now. Just a little bit of a quality horn. None. Just the visual go run day air. Just the chunk of hen chair clean to his Gunzi, that's a great Gunzi, didn't you? You care. That's a grand day, not at a thirty degrees, you did that way, yeah, like when Zika's neck, quite a good cigarette. I track the heatle that sack, the cat the heatle that sack, well, go got tea that sack, oil cannon. I oil that drink non cut, ozen and cut on va tray. I ozevishi cut in oil can. This doesn't make sense to destroy such a nice piece of land. The last frontier, they call it. <laughs> and I don't see why we should mess with it. It doesn't belong to nobody. It's just like our parents. We survive on it. It's hard to see uh, the people trying to, trying to, uh, destroy the property, especially the caribou. I mean, right in their calving grounds, they're gonna, they're trying to dig around in their calving grounds and see how they could do that. The queen to la no tlit kat zik nan kak kuit lo kah na kukui ai. Khai kakan thi thai kos Kukwatsi, Oil, I can't take a net like we do it again. So, I know then in Salahan a great idea. Tunch it looked at don't check on a grania qua. The goods in from the Mackenzie River Delta have already dealt with oil development. Johnny Charlie from Fort McPherson offered a warning. I tell that oil people cut suck. You shut down. the money offered by the oil companies will not be enough. We can't go wrong with it, you know, because we Ticket, <laughs> The Guchin have had great problems getting the civil servants and politicians to listen to them. They feel that the governments do not respect their knowledge of the land and animals. We have been having meeting about it for almost 10 years now, but we haven't been heard in our in legislature or Congress. The leaders the chief are, uh, want to have input from all people how the land being used and how it's important it is. 
and I think it's very important that we get the people uh, together and listen to their the goods and the bads, whether they are for or against this uh, pipeline and put you know, drilling. Nothing. They're not here, and they can't hear us from there. And if we have it in writing with our signatures on it, I think they'll know at least we have one nation of Gujarat people that are saying no, and, that, and we mean no, and you know, and maybe, maybe it may, it may, may help a little in the decision making. So like nine. Uh, I can't express how happy I am with the last three days of results and and everything that's happened. I I heard a lot of people talk. People I never even con uh, thought had the nerve to stand up in front of people and in front of other groups, you know. And I am very proud of what we did just, just by uh, having a lot of people come out and speak. The Gwich'in left Arctic Village strong and committed. They will not let their culture and language die. They will not stand by as their land and caribou are sacrificed to development. They will stand together as one people and demand a better future for their children and grandchildren. We have chosen as a Kuchin nation to live that way. We're going to continue to eat the kinds of food that we've always eaten, the fish, the ducks, the caribou. And together here, we're going to fight in a good way to teach many white people out there who do not understand our ways. We got to teach them. When my grandfather was out on a land and I was with him, many times he'd tell me, you don't trap here for a while till your kids are big. And I look at him and I say, me, kids? And now my boys go there. They go there and they trap for beaver and muskrats now. We have our ways of conservation that we must show a lot of the people in the world. The Kuchin people are one of the last surviving people who survive from the land. <laughs> Ya 
For the Guchin people, the gathering was a time to share stories and songs, the language and dances, their hopes and fears. It was time to come together in unity to make the hard decisions facing them. Would the culture be strong enough to withstand the internal forces of alcohol and indifference and the outside pressures of oil and gas development to the precious calving grounds? People left Arctic Village with a renewed spirit, knowing that there was still a long way to go and so much to do. For me, the trip to Gujinnintsia has been very special. I now keep in touch with friends and relatives in Alaska. At home, my family and I are working on our language to communicate in Gujin. For Neda, I'm Ruth Carroll. <laughs>